Following the UN's report on last summer's Gaza war, the fallout and reactions continue to come in with the report's head American jur uh, jurist uh, Mary McGowan Davis saying it was meant to show Israel must uh, re-examine its military policy. Here is uh, Leo Holmberg on what was and what may come next. The uh, report in hand was commissioned by a notoriously biased institution. It was given an obviously biased mandate. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as most of the Israeli political and diplomatic echelon, completely dismissed the UN Human Rights Council report on last summer's Gaza war. But it seems Jerusalem was preparing itself for such an international investigation from the very first day of Operation Protective Edge. Soldiers from almost all combat units were armed not only with traditional equipment, but with the weapon of the modern era, a camera. Some videos from the actual battlefront were even released by the IDF spokesperson unit in order to have some influence over how the operation was being portrayed internationally. From computer files collected from terrorists' homes through Hamas pamphlets explaining how to fire directly at Israeli soldiers or why it is important to launch rockets from residential areas, all of these and more will be part of a thorough report. Finally, the work of the IDF's International Law Department, which accompanied soldiers on the ground and supplied in-action legal advice to make sure no international laws were being violated, even and maybe especially when quick action was needed. After the operation, almost 200 incidents were investigated by the military advocate general, among them seven which became criminal investigations. In addition, 15 cases were examined by Israeli military police, leading, in one case, to three indictments given to three Israeli combat soldiers after they stole a small amount of money from a Palestinian home in Gaza. The peak was reached last week when two reports, one by an Israeli commission and the second by a group of international high-ranking military and diplomatic officials, both concluded that Israel fought a legitimate war and acted not only in accordance with international standards, but even exceeded them. So Israel treats this report uh, as flawed and biased, and it urges all fair-minded observers to do the same. So whether the report was biased or not, whether its findings suit Israel's perception or not, one thing is certain, Israel also prepared itself to fight any potential international criticism. And with me right now here in the studio is diplomatic correspondent Eli Ochenberg. Good evening. Good evening, Lucy. So, you know, when you have the lawyer, when you have the footage, when you have the prime minister saying, ah, this is biased, we have our own reports, when you, God, you have two reports, it means that you are already prepared to go in front of a judge and put your claims on the table. Absolutely. Someone built a case here uh, from the very beginning, but it's not only the efforts we've seen until now, but after the release of the report, the diplomatic efforts are, of course, gaining momentum. And next Monday in Geneva, the uh, uh, the, human, the UN uh, uh, Human Rights Council will debate this report. The Council uh, commissioned this report, so it's... It is up to this body to decide what uh, will uh, will happen from now on, and the report is likely to be adopted. And Israel, you know, is not uh, hallucinating anything else. So this is what is uh, pro is probably going to happen. So the main focus now of the diplomatic uh, efforts is to uh, uh, to recruit what it is called a moral uh, majority because we have the Arab majority in the commission. So there is no chance the report will not be adopted. But this moral uh, majority can either uh, uh, abstain or vote against uh, the report. You know, I'm trying to uh, think, and since yesterday, I'm saying this is going to work out perfectly for the Palestinians in front of the ICC. This report, when, although it's putting the blame on Hamas and Israel, mm -hmm. but this is going, you, it's like the Palestinians can come and say, you see, we now need your help. We now need the state that we're talking about because we don't want to get again to another report, to another situation like that. Yes, but. But. <laughs> and the but. So le last April, uh, the Palestinians joined the, joined the International Criminal Court in The Hague and a preliminary uh, examination of what happened during and after Operation Protective Edge was launched. And 
this uh, report definitely can, you know, increase the enthusiasm of the ICC to move from the uh, preliminary stage to a full-on investigation. But this report does not include specific soldiers, does not uh, name specific people who did this and that, so it's not a proper legal case. So either way, the ICC will have to uh, have to do its, its own homework and launch another uh, investigation in order to build a proper case. So this UN report has great headlines, but the ramifications are not so crucial at the moment. You know, I'm trying to think because uh, all these years we've been hearing a lot of uh, threats that uh, of, uh, let's say, high-ranked officers and high-ranked politicians that may find themselves at the end of the day getting abroad and getting arrested. But it's not actually happening. So it's like it seems not like these are threats, but action, we don't see any actions on the ground. Again, there's a, a serious gap between the headlines these sorts of reports or threats are receiving and uh, then the actual uh, uh, situation. On the ground, only last week, Israel was filled with reports uh, of fears that Shaul Mufaz, a former Israeli politician, will get arrested while arriving into in London. Nothing happened, obviously. But this threat, especially in this very sensitive diplomatic uh, uh, timing, is not good for Israel. Shaul Mufaz, really? This just like okay, they <laughs> they knew what was uh, <laughs> they know him. The, I don't, the, the result sure. in the last election. No, okay, uh, Elio Homburg, thank you very much. Thank for this. you.